Hi and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. I'm Steve and in this video we're going to learn how to crop an image in Photoshop. So let's dive over into an example here. This is just a little picture of some coffee and donuts and a little tablet dealy. And what we're going to do is just crop into this coffee cup. Just as an example. And that'll allow me to teach you all the kind of ins and outs of cropping. Of course, the first thing you need to do to crop is go to the crop tool. So the way you do that is you press the C key on your keyboard and you'll notice all these crop handles show up. If you don't want to push the C key, you can go straight over here to the crop tool and click on it as well. And you might notice these crop handles are from Photoshop CC 2020. They've made them really big, almost caricature-like, which at first I wasn't sure if I liked that, but I, now that I think it's kind of cool. But yours might be smaller, so don't be surprised unless you have the updated version of 2020. So, how do you crop? Well, it's pretty simple. In the most basic sense, all you do is grab one of these crop handles, and if you grab one of the flat sides, then you'll move side to side. If you grab one of the corners, then you can move both of these sides like this, and you just drag it into where you want it. And of course, when you're cropping, you're always thinking about composition. So if I'm cropping this mug, I probably wouldn't want to, say, crop the bottom of it off or I wouldn't want to probably crop the handle off, although that depends on what your mission is. But let's say we just want the whole mug. We're going to give a little space around the edges of the handle and at the bottom and go right about there. And release. When you release, it grays out the rest of the image so that you can sort of get a better preview of what you're looking at, which is nice. Obviously one of the issues here is that we have the corner of this in there, but you would probably go in later and either clone stamp or healing brush tool that out of there just to clean it up and make it more consistent. But that's your basic composition. Actually, we'd probably want to go in just a little bit more there to make it even. There we go. You also have these grids on here which are showing you the rule of thirds. So if you want to put areas of interest along those lines, if you've ever taken an art class or anything, you've probably remember the rule of thirds. It just means that at these intersections and at these lines, viewers' eyes like to go to those places. So where we have this little cat face or whatever right here along this third, that's not a bad spot for it. And you can play with those grids. You can do different grids here to help you with your composition. For instance, if you wanted to go with the golden ratio, that's a different mathematical measurement to show you where to place things in the image. Most people don't use these, but um, I think I just always have mine on the rule of thirds because I kind of like that. But you can also turn them off and just go with your straight crop corners. Okay, I'm going to put that back on. Always show overlay. There we go. Okay, a couple other things to be aware of. Once you've moved your crop handles to where you want them, then you have to finalize that crop. And the way you do that is you either hit the enter key or you hit this check mark up here. If you decide you don't want to crop it, you want to go back, you can hit this to just cancel your crop. That's just going to cancel it and put it back to normal. And then if you want to just go back to your original, you can hit this button. So when I click this, you notice it's just going to go back to my original image that hasn't been modified yet. Okay, what if I wanted to do a different way of selecting that area? Well, if I click on the crop tool again, it's going to give me, let's do it a couple times, it's going to give me this little crop cursor here. And if I left click up here in the corner and I start to drag, notice I've got some marching ants. And I can actually use those marching ants. Let's crop in a little tighter this time. And then define where I want it to be and then release. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to crop it in to that area that I selected. So that's kind of cool. And that's kind of like more of an old school way to do it. And I know a lot of people who have used Photoshop for a long time who love to do it that way because that's the way they learned like 10 or, you know, 10 years ago. 
Also, you can grab the image and move it within your crop handles. I didn't mention that before. So if I wanted to go up a little bit, crop it down a little, then I can move it up into the there like that. But you're actually grabbing the image behind your crop handles. So you go and drop it. And then that's that's what you got. One word of warning before you hit this check mark right here, go up to your tool option bar. These are the options for the crop tool right here. And make sure that delete cropped pixels is not checked. If this is checked and you hit that button, then all of these other pixels are actually going to be deleted, which in very rare instances, that's appropriate. But for the most part, you don't want to do that because you want to be able to go back and modify this. Maybe you need to pull it out a little bit and change your crop. If you've deleted those pixels, then they're gone. And it's just a little, a few hoops you have to jump through to get them back. So leave that unchecked, hit the enter key or the check mark to actually finalize your crop. And there's your cropped image. Again, we'd want to do some cleaning up on that corner because that doesn't look great. But that's just the composition that we had to work with. So that's how it goes. In other videos, I teach how to use the healing brush tool and the clone stamp tool to fill in stuff like that. So that would be a good one to check out. Right, so if, for example, we wanted to make this bigger again, then I didn't delete the cropped pixels so I can go in here, start up the crop tool again, and you'll notice they're all still there, okay? So that's important. If, you, if I went over here and I forgot where I was when I had originally cropped, I can just say revert and it's gonna go back to the previous crop. And then I'll just say, I can either hit check and say okay, or I can just cancel this crop and it'll go back to their previous version. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these options up here and see what you can do with this. This area right here allows you to type in either presets or custom sizes or ratios. And so, for instance, we're, we're on ratio right now, and we'll see there are a lot of different options. You can change the width and the height and the resolution all in one shot by clicking on this one. It gives you all these options. You can even select what measurements you want to do it in. You can, like I say, do a ratio. So if I wanted it to be one unit wide and two units long, then I do that and you see it's one unit wide, two units long. And this could be inches or pixels or whatever size you want it to be. If you wanted it to be a square, you could do it one by one. And now when you grab these crop handles and move it, you'll notice that it's constraining the proportions to being a square, right? So this is important if you're doing like a social media profile picture, then you would probably want to constrain it to a square or put your own ratios in like that, okay? If you wanted to do like, say like a YouTube uh, cover image, which is really long and wide, then you'd go in here and you'd put those, I thought I had a preset in here for it, but I guess I don't. You can create your own presets. And I just updated this and it didn't save over all my presets, but you could put in your the ratio, you could put in the uh, width and height of the YouTube image and it will constrain it to those proportions for you. In fact, I think that those numbers are 2,000, oops, 2,560 pixels by 1,440 pixels. That looks about right. So you can put in the, inch, the measurements like that and then that's pixels per inch and then you'll notice that it sets it to those proportions and of course I would have to take this and drag and figure out a decent composition for what I'm looking for. Obviously this image isn't the best but that actually that's not bad. A little donut on the side with your coffee. If this is like for your coffee shop or whatever and then of course once you've got it you click that and you'd be ready. But let's talk a little bit more about these presets because they can be valuable. So again, you have like ratios. So you have a square, you have four by five, five by seven. So if you want to do like a five by seven print or a four by six print, you can see how these kind of line up with different print sizes. And then these are more like web sizes. So these 
line up with high definition dimensions for like screen resolution. And then if you want to create a new one, you can go in here and click new. And you notice it preloaded what I already had in there, in here. And you could just name it that, or we could name it, just I'll just name it YouTube for now. And you click OK. And then when you go back in here, you'll notice that it's there as an option. So you can just quickly, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, I clicked with my crop tool. I'm just going to hit Control Zero to go back to full screen. I accidentally clicked on the image and completed the crop. Sorry about that. But anyway, if we bring back up our thing and we can go to here, we could go to our YouTube dimensions and then it's going to put that right in there for us. So you could crank out images using those presets and it makes it really quick and easy. So that's the major overview of cropping. The only two things I didn't cover are straightening with the crop, which is kind of a subject for a whole video, and then using content aware fill, which is also kind of a subject for a whole video. So be on the lookout for those. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and learned something, click like. Subscribe if you want to get more videos, and check out some of the links in the description if you want to learn a whole ton more from me, because I teach so much stuff. <laughs> and I'd love to have you keep learning with me. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.